Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Dennis and I'm the founder and creative lead here at UX Native and a humble investor and entrepreneur. And I know, I know, I know, that was a long introduction, but it was required for this video. Today, we are going to discuss a bit about investing and more precisely, my own experience so far. So let's roll the intro and start. You made a bit of money and now you don't know what to do with it. Or maybe you started freelancing so you're thinking about who's going to pay my pension or even am I going to have a pension? That's how it all started for me. I've quit my job and became a contractor and started my own company. Initially, I tried to pay the minimum amount of taxes so that I can survive in the beginning. But then the question arose about my future and my pension. When I first started, my employer used to contribute to that. So my question was, should I continue contributing to a private pension, just like my employer used to do, or look into other things that could potentially bring me more money in the future? So as you can imagine, I was a bit confused. That's when I've stumbled upon Benjamin Graham's book called The Intelligent Investor, where it said that if you had zero knowledge of investing, which I did at that point, and you want to just start out, you should start investing in index funds like S&P 500, Don Jones Industrial Average, or NASDAQ 100. And for those who don't know who Benjamin Graham was, he was Warren Buffett's mentor. And for those who don't know who Warren Buffett is, from the book, motherfucker, from the book. The S&P 500 index, or the Standard and Poor's 500 index, as it's called, it's a market capitalization weighted index of the 500 largest US publicly traded companies. So in this index, you have companies like Apple, Tesla, Intel. There are a lot of companies, 500 to be more precise. So the list is super long but you can look it online. So the question is, how did I do this and how did I start? Personally, I've used Vanguard as a platform. However, there are plenty to use out there. Vanguard can be found in other countries as well, but the one I'm currently signed into is the UK, UK franchise just because I'm based in the UK. Since I started back in 2017, I've made around 10% per year as an average on my invested money. Which, for those who say like, oh, Dennis, but I have a friend of mine that is making 250% a year selling Pokemon cards. Or, oh, Dennis, but I invested in this new cryptocurrency and I made 4,000% last year. For all those people, I dare you to try to keep up those profits year after year for 40 years in a row. Good luck with that. But for us mere mortals and not financial gurus, let me explain. If you invest $200 or £200 or whatever your currency is a month for the next 40 years, which is the average work expectancy of a human being before he retires, meaning that you start working at 20 and you retire at 60, thanks to the magic of compound interest, you'll have around 1.4 million when you retire, which you only contributed around 100k. The rest is the interest which is 1.3 million which is basically free money and if you adjust your profits to an average inflation rate between two and four percent you'll end up with a real profit of around half of that which is around 700 plus k i personally started with a bigger chunk just because i began investing only when i turned 25 so i had to calculate what was the amount that i had to contribute in five years that i missed out and after that, I've just set up like a monthly rolling debit and that I invest on a regular basis, which I hope to increase over time as well. There will be years though, when the S&P will go down. However, this is a long-term investment. And you will notice that over time, everything should turn out just fine. So don't panic once the market goes down a couple of points. As far as my knowledge goes, index funds will always go up in time, unless something will come up and our entire economical ecosystem, as we know it, will collapse. Maybe that's Bitcoin. Don't know. I've also invested some money into bonds via the same platform. With bonds, you basically lend money to the state or the government at a fixed interest rate. Basically, you're a small bank for the government, which is kind of cool, right? You give them the money and they pay you interest on it. 
again, depending on the bonds, you can get anywhere between 5 and 15% on your investment per year. Again, this had a good return, especially in the past year because of the pandemic, as the government needed money to lend to businesses and pay all the grants. Yes, people, that money is not free. The government will probably start getting it back by probably raising taxes and introducing new ways for us to give the money back so they can pay the lenders and the interest. Spoiler alert, I'm sorry. The next option, which is my favorite one for investing money, is in real estate. Unfortunately, I've only invested in my flat here in London so far, since I was tired of paying a premium rent to live closer to the city center. But I'm planning to buy more properties in the future, not only in London, but also in other countries. Dubai is looking pretty good right now, also Spain, Scotland, and for my USA folks, Orlando. I know it's not your favorite part, but for us from the other side of the pond, it looks like a very good investment. And you never know what will happen in the future. For this, you usually only need a 10% deposit and a small fee for your solicitor, which depending on the type of the property you want to buy will vary. For me, it was around £2,000 for a one bed flat here in London in zone 2. And as things changed in the past, you don't need to pay a stamp duty anymore. Till March at least, which is amazing and hopefully the PM will prolong the period as the stamp duty will cost you another 5 to 10% on top of that depending on the property value. Another investment that I started recently is cryptocurrencies. I am pretty new to this, however I have a friend that has done his due diligence and has emerged me into the subject. I used this platform called Binance and I have invested so far in free cryptocurrencies and one of which obviously is Bitcoin. The turnaround has been extremely impressive, I have to admit. However, I am not getting myself too excited just because as you know with cryptocurrencies and any type of like risky investment, this can go either way. But pretty much this is it. This is my journey as a tiny investor at the moment. I will keep you posted, however, as I start investing in more and more things or if I discover something new. With this being said, let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a separate and more in detail video of each of these free investment options. And please, I cannot stress this enough, do your due diligence before investing, as this is a risky activity and you can lose money. I've discussed my experience so far, but yours can be different, you never know. So do your research before you decide to invest in anything. Thank you all for today. And as always, on your way out, please remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Take care and see you soon.